Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Great Photo Finish. You're coming here because you've hit a link in the information document for my Great Photo Finish tutorial on a portrait I made of Guitar Bob, a smoke break at the end of a photo shoot. I said we had linked to a previously published video for me to show you a technique that I use over and over and over again, using the brush as a tool and working on a mask associated with an adjustment layer to make a local change to an image, and I just decided to end up working on the same image and essentially duplicating the work of one or two of my adjustment layers so that you can see this technique very quickly in a super short video. So right now I just have the eyeballs turned on on the first two layers I used to convert to black and white, red and blue channel. Let's uh, go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and apply local darkening to this lower left hand corner. So I'm just going to go to my adjustment layer, curves. I'm going to use the target adjustment tool right here to generally see where these pixels are. They're right in here, so I'm going to pull down on this part of the curve. I don't want to increase contrast in there, but I will say that a lot of times when I go to darken an area, a lot of times I will not only push down on the curve, but I'll change the steepness of the curve so that the change doesn't seem really flat. There's already quite a bit of contrast in there, and I don't want to draw the eye down into this area. So I'm just going to darken. And what I tend to do is give myself more of the change than I think that I'll need. And because I'm going to be applying this locally, first part of this technique is to fill this mask with black, which is going to get rid of the change that I just made on the curves everywhere. So with black as the background color, I'm going to command delete on a Mac, control delete on a PC, and that will fill the mask with the background color black. Now we're back to where we started, and now I'm going to use this technique that I use almost all the time to apply local edits of value, contrast, and color to my images. When I hit B for the brush tool, I want to make sure the hardness on my brush is zero so that I have a very feathered edge to the brush and I'm going to start painting at a very low opacity. So I'm going to use strokes that are very weak and then I'm going to paint with a brush quite a bit and build up these paintbrush strokes that are very soft and um, they're very faint. And then that's going to build up into the change that I want to make. And doing the work in this way is what is going to keep it seamless. So let's change the opacity on the brush to 5%. I'm going to hit 0, 05 real quick on my keyboard to get there as a shortcut. I'm going to get a bigger brush. I always want to paint with the biggest brush possible because that means that from the middle of the brush out to the edge with the hardness being zero, I'll have more of a feathered brush stroke. And now as I paint, I am very, very subtly darkening. If I go ahead now and turn the eyeball on and off here, you can see the darkening that I've applied. If we option click on the mask, you can see just how soft the gradient is on the change as it moves up into the smoke. And I really want the corner to be darker. I typically vignette my corners anyway because I'm a traditionalist when it comes to finishing. So I can go ahead and bias the corner and make it darker, then get a bigger brush, and then paint like this. You can see that I'm not too worried about the darkening getting over in here, getting up on the smoke. I can come back at the end and reverse course here a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about and deal with that. I could come and get a little bit of a smaller brush and paint in here. If I wanted to, I could push the idea of some form down in here. But remember, I'm trying not to draw the eye into this area. I want it to move back in the composition and the smoke to move forward. This is the work that I have done so far. If I wanted to now, I could hit the X key, get a much smaller brush. If I was working on this for print, I would zoom into the image now. And I could go to a higher opacity, let's say like 20% and back off of any darkening that might have happened to the edge of the hand here. Get a little bit bigger brush, maybe go to an opacity of 10%. I did that by hitting the 1 key. And then I'm going to come in and uh, back off on the smoke right here. I don't know if you can hear new addition to my family here, Finn, who is an awesome tabby cat. Brand new. And Finn loves to get in front of the computer. I think he wants to learn Photoshop. I'm trying to fend him off right now. He's so excited about the work that we're doing, but you might hear him crying in the background because I'm not letting him get up here and lay down on my mouse pad. Okay, he's gone away. Um, now, remember in the earlier video where I talked about just doubling the effect instead of continuing to paint, we've got a nice um, series of brush strokes here that we've done to this mask. I can just do Command J, Control J on a PC to double that, and then I could back off on my opacity if I don't want all of the doubling. And Finn did make it 
stuff and I am having to put him down. Sorry Finn, you'll learn Photoshop later. Okay, now let's do one other uh, layer here and uh, this time the work will be a little bit more specific. Let's look at increasing the contrast and then on the eye and the brim of the hat and uh, we can use a different adjustment layer to do that. So let's uh, go to levels. And so much of the time, this is how I will increase contrast. Start off with something that's really non-technical. I'll go to a levels adjustment layer, and I will pull pretty hard from the right to get a lot more bright, and a little bit from the left to add some low end. And uh, I have way more than I'm going to need here now. And now what I'm going to do is the same thing that we did before. Make black the background colors. I'm going to hit the X key and then Command Delete on a Mac, Control Delete on a PC. Brush tool, I already have it active. I want to make sure whenever I am making local changes by editing a mask with the brush and some achromatic color idea like white, black, or gray that I am at zero hardness and I want to start at very low opacities and build up. So 0.5, I'm going to hit that on my keyboard and now I'm going to start to paint in the areas where I want to pop this idea of local contrast. One thing I can do here is I can click right there and then I can hold down the shift key and click right there and I could do that again. It's one way to sort of paint a straight line or paint along an edge. Lots of people say, gosh Craig, I can't believe that you don't use a Wacom tablet. You sure could do a lot better job editing if you did and I can't even, you can't even do editing without a Wacom tablet. It's just one of this is a great example of something that I have not added into my workflow and I do not plan on it anytime soon. It's a really good example of adding more and more stuff, more and more technique. Uh, I see people working on these things all the time in my workshop. I don't think they're going any faster than I do on edits. I've developed a system that works for me doing this by hand on my mouth that I love. It's not limiting me and uh, so I don't want to add one more technical thing. You know what I would like to add? Some more emotion into my life. <laughs> Some more feeling. The problem with stuff and the problem with technique is that will keep you away from a critical part of your creative process. That's being imaginative. It'll keep you away from that. You won't have the time to do it. And it'll keep you away from feel. It'll keep you away from feeling. Um, yeah, some people might think I'm crazy about what I'm just saying, but boy do I, I go real slow when it comes to adding new technique. We just have a lot of fun here now. Contrast is what draws the eye. And so we could just come in using different size brushes. Again, if this was for print, I might zoom in, but I can just paint in all of the places here that I want to accentuate. And let's just turn the eyeball on and off right now so you can see what we've done so far. Can you see how subtle this is? Yeah, it takes a little bit more time. Let me option click on the mask. But can you see how subtle it is if you make each stroke soft and turn the strength down on the stroke. You don't have to paint in such an exact way. And in fact, I would make the case that if you don't paint in an exact way, like you could with the Wacom, it'll make your edits feel more like the way light moves. The, the more uh, the feeling of a gradient is something that's multi-dimensional instead of monolithic. And um, it's another reason why I'm not really interested in uh, the Wacom. Um, now you're just seeing me in much more of a rough way and more sort of a blunt way paint up this idea of contrast to push the idea of value because contrast draws the eye. You get bigger brush, smaller brush, just paint in all of the areas where I want to create this sort of circle of movement that we talked about in the other two videos. There's the before and there is the after. The work that I've just shown you in this short video, it form forms uh, ninety percent of the time that I spend in Photoshop is just this technique of the brush and the mask and making the changes that I make and you know, I sort of joke on my workshops that for me to try and make some kind of money off of you teaching you Photoshop technique would not work very well because the techniques that I use are super limited I can teach you all of them in a very short amount of time and you can go practice those and get efficient with those and then if you limit yourself to just a few techniques spend more time taking pictures seeing envisioning you don't need a lot of technique in the dark room to go a very very long way Thanks so much for being here. Hope to see you again very soon on the Mindful Eye.